Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by by Metalloid Firearms and Sports, utilizing botanical technologies to develop an advanced high-performance line of environmentally friendly firearm maintenance products that will not only clean and protect your firearms, but also your leather and wood components. Find out more at MetalloidFirearmsProducts.com. And by Mr. Musky Charters, offering full-service guided fishing trips for walleye, muskie, bass, and sturgeon on Lake St. Clair and the Detroit and St. Clair Rivers. Booking information is online at MrMuskyCharters.com. Hey everyone, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. I'm Jenny Olson and firearm deer season is finally here in Michigan. We are all across the state this week getting stories from different deer camps. We'll bring you those stories on upcoming weeks of the show. And this week we figured a lot of you will be at deer camp watching this week's show. So we wanted to bring you some of our favorite deer hunting stories from years past. We'll start with Jordan Brown up in the UP at an awesome deer camp there. And Jimmy Gretzinger will take us to another deer camp. Well, this time of the year is always a special time, the opening week of the firearm deer season here in the great state of Michigan. We're gonna show you a hunt from the Thumb area, actually Sandusky, and there is some really good deer hunting over in that part of the state. And if you don't have a buck hanging on the pole yet, hopefully these stories this week will get you excited to get back out there. There's still lots of season left. Thanks for joining us this week. Make sure you stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger. It's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze, dancing on the pine forest floor, the autumn colors catch your eyes, here come the crystal winter skies. It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors. Someday our children all will see this is their finest legacy. The wonder and the love of Michigan as the wind comes whispering through the trees. The sweet smell of nature's in the air. Great Lakes to the quiet stream, shining like a sportsman's dream. It's a love of Michigan we all share. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by By Country Smokehouse, offering a variety of meat products. Country Smokehouse is located three miles south of I-69 on M53, just south of Imlay City. Country Smokehouse is a meat processor, a butcher, and a destination for sportsmen. By KL Outdoor, a Muskegon manufacturer of sportsmen's outdoor products for over 30 years, featuring the terrain line of hard-sided hunting blinds designed for quick setup and removal with quiet operation. For more information and other products, kloutdoor.com. By G5 Outdoors, makers of the Quest and Prime bows. Manufactured and designed in Memphis, Michigan, G5 offers archery bows, broadheads, and accessories on the web at g5outdoors.com. By Meyer, a destination for hunting, fishing, and camping supplies. Offering hunting apparel and accessories, as well as hunting and fishing licenses. Meyer has nearly everything you need to take on nature and get you there. Hi, I'm Jordan Brown, and we kick off this week's show up here at Deer Camp in the UP for the first couple days of the firearm deer season here in Menominee County. The 2014 firearm opener had me headed north to the UP for the first few days of season, hunting at a camp in Menominee County that's been around for quite some time. This particular camp here was built in 1925 by a neighboring farmer and his son. They built it for four gentlemen down in Menominee, Michigan, and they used this camp for many years. In the early 60s, the farmer's son was able to buy this piece of property from some of the widows of the original owners and he owned it until the early 90s where my partner Dave and I were able to purchase the camp and we have now been the owners since the, the mid 90s. Although this camp has seen a few renovations over the last 90 years, it's still supported by the original walls built in 1925. This area of the state is known for its deer hunting, and despite a couple of rough winters, good habitat and plenty of food have kept the deer numbers in pretty good shape. We're situated here basically uh, north and south in the middle of Menominee County, uh, about 10 miles off of uh, Green Bay, Lake Michigan, and we are pretty much in a cedar swamp area with 
farm ridges. A lot of agriculture in this particular area of the county and uh, it, it really makes for very good deer habitat. They have the cedar swamps for the winter protection. They have the grain fields and the hay fields for uh, feed purposes and we generally have a fairly decent amount of deer. Probably oh, 12, 15 years ago we had some very, very high numbers, uh, too high a numbers for the farmers purposes and for ours and um, now we've gotten I believe into a much more stable deer herd. Uh, we still can go out on an opening day and see you know 10 or 15 deer. Some of us see more, some of us a few less but uh, it's just really nice to be able to see them and enjoy them. After a big breakfast, I hit the woods with Ryan Bershma for the opening morning hunt in a one-of-a-kind blind that he and Don built several years ago. Don and I were out uh, turkey hunting one spring and he said, we have to put a blind back here. There's an old junky blind that uh, needs to be replaced. So we went back there and we just decided up on that little hill, the lower we got to the ground, the uh, the better we could see underneath all the cedars and so uh, we decided to start digging a hole and we thought we'd be a some type of pit blind but uh, we ended up calling it the bunker. It's uh, the bottom half is all concrete. I got 29 bags of concrete in the floor uh, and then it's got five courses of uh, cement block and and then uh, you know it just comes out of the ground a few feet so that you can see good. The view from the blind was pretty neat but I immediately realized that filming was going to be a bit difficult. We were limited to only a handful of shooting lanes that allowed us very little time to actually get the camera on a deer. But that's all part of the game when you hunt this kind of habitat. You know, you get usually, uh, I always kid because I see a lot of the front halves of deers, but I, I see a lot more of the just the, the, the back half of a deer because as you're checking the different lanes, all of a sudden there's a deer there. And a lot of times at 100 yards, that lane is, is only a half a deer wide. And so... Uh, if you're not lucky enough to be looking down the lane right when it steps out, you see the second half to begin with, and then you try to actually judge body size so that when you get to the next lane you have an idea. Uh, it was easier with two of us today. You know, we could, uh, one could watch the lane and, and the other could be watching back behind trying to pick it out, but uh, it's different. It, it's, it's not like wide open uh, field hunting for certain. Well, by mid-morning we found ourselves in a pretty good position to be in. There was a doe in heat in the area that had already brought by two smaller bucks, and we knew it was just a matter of time until a bigger buck showed up to join the chase. Sure enough, a little after nine, we had a nice buck walk by. Now we just had to decide if he was a shooter and see if we could get a shot. What is it? He's a eight, kind of a lighter one. I'm gonna take him if I get a shot. Are you on him? I'm on him, yeah. Just tell me right before you're gonna shoot. I need another step. Okay, let him get just on the other side of the tree and then go, once he's on the other side of the feeder, go ahead. Okay. If you can shoot over the other one. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. I can't get him. Can you see the toe? Well, we were sitting here, had a spike come through and a, and a doe. Actually, the doe came through first and then the spike came through and that little button buck that we got some footage of has been down there the whole time. And all of a sudden, we saw a deer flick through a lane and then saw another one and uh, thought we saw antlers. We weren't real sure. And then it came back through going east again. And uh, I said it was a rack. I didn't know how big it was. And then uh, the doe came back in and and then the buck followed, came through the opening right behind the feeder there with the tin uh, on the tree. And uh, 
Jordan says, don't shoot, don't shoot, because I had the opening, but he didn't for the camera, and then it, he saw it coming to the next lane, and it came in, circled around a little bit, was gonna go back, check out that doe, and, and uh, dropped him right there, and nothing else to say. Are you ready to go see what it is? Guy's a warrior. That one's broke. That one's broke. That one's broke. Well, we walked down here. We gave it about an hour. Uh, turns out to be an eight pointer. It's got four broken tines, but uh, must have been uh, battling a little bit. And uh, there's a few bigger bucks around, but overall, uh, it's been a good morning. We've seen four bucks, uh, two different fork horns, and a spike, and then this one. So it's been a successful morning. We hunted for the rest of the day, and although we did see a couple of small bucks at night, we never did see another buck big enough to shoot. When we arrived back to camp, we found out that we weren't the only successful hunters on opening day. Dave Wickstorm, one of the owners of the camp, had tagged a nice buck and a bonus coyote to go along with it. And although we were the only two successful hunters on opening day, that's not what deer camp in the UP is all about. Hunting in the UP is... Uh just a great experience. Living here, uh, having the opportunity to uh, raise my family here and enjoy camp and the opportunities that the UP brings us for recreation is just a, a really valuable aspect. And, and hunting here is hunting at home and it is enjoyable for all of us. It's uh, a great opportunity to connect better with friends and family, and we just appreciate the opportunity we have to be here in this area, have this camp, and share it with as many people as are willing to come. Deer camp is a special place, and when it's in the UP, at a cabin that's nearly 90 years old, and you're able to hang a few bucks from the pole, well that's pretty hard to beat. A special thanks to Don and Dave, as well as everyone else in camp, for letting me tag along on the first few days of gun season here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Well, hunting the Upper Peninsula is always a lot of fun this time of the year, but there are so many great corners of our state to explore, and if you've never hunted the Thumb, tell you what, you may want to give it a try. My opening day was spent in the thumb of our great state in the little town of Sandusky. Yes, there is a Sandusky in Michigan. And if you haven't been to the thumb, well, it's a great place to deer hunt. Maybe it's the giant sugar beet fields that have something to do with it, not sure. But as I got to town, Terry Weiler took me for a ride to show me the property that we would be hunting in the morning. Terry, what are we doing now? Uh, we're just uh, going to take a ride, see what we got for tomorrow morning, check the property out, and um, just... Uh, Get a quick look, see what's out there. Okay. A lot, a lot of the corn's down already, which is a good sign. And right. um, we'll make a little bit, I think, a better hunt with that corn being down. So. And how big of a piece do you guys hunt tomorrow? Uh, 123 acres, and we lease another 80 acres. I have to say, I was pretty amazed that the night before the opener, we could drive to many of the giant fields in the area and not just see a deer or two, but 30, maybe even 40. It really was quite amazing. So after that, we hit the local hotspot, a small bar in town for some dinner, and got to hang out with all sorts of folks excited for the morning hunt. Now, most of Terry's family would be on the hunt with us, and as we made our way back to the family home, Terry showed me a few of the bucks off the property. The bucks from our property last probably 10 years. Okay. There's probably, these antlers here are from my dad and my brother Steve. Okay. And then we have myself, Dave and myself, and. We got our own sets at home, but yeah, there's this part of what you see right here, what's out there. So, so you're looking for a decent eight point? Decent eight point, outside the years. Okay. Somewhere in there, so. All right. We've made some mistakes before. There's a couple seven points in here. <laughs> 
After seeing all the deer in the area and the kind of bucks that these guys shoot, I was pretty excited to say the least. Every deer camp is different, and for these guys, the opener ritual is to head to town at 5 a.m. and have breakfast all together. It's, it's pretty much, we stay at home. <laughs> we spend every, every opening morning, you go up to Snusky, up into the restaurant, eat breakfast, and it's pretty much more of a modern deer camp. Very family oriented. We have uh, my son-in-law, my, my son, uh, both my brothers, my dad, actually Dave's daughter. And, and Dave's getting his, his six-year-old son will be out tonight hunting. So he's going to bring him out. He's, he's pretty excited about that. Now the blind that Terry and I were in was very nice, and the amount of deer that we were seeing had us hopping from window to window in hopes of seeing a shooter buck. I have hunted the thumb before, and the amount of large flat fields does lend itself to holding good numbers of deer. The Thumb of Michigan is a lot of farmland, a ton of farmland actually. It's uh, pockets of woods. Uh, the farmland consists of sugar beets, corn, soybeans, uh, winter wheat this time of year, and uh, again, this pockets of woods. Uh, we we sit mainly on the edges of the, of our of our 123 acres. We have blinds that surround our property. We're sitting on a couple fields, uh, which had soybeans in them this past uh, this past summer, and uh, there was corn around the area too. And uh, it's, uh, we have a couple blinds in the woods. We we mainly try to just hunt the perimeter perimeter of our our, our 123 acres. Well, it's uh, nine o'clock, and uh, we've seen what probably 15 to 20 deer. I've lost track. Actually, there's there's another one right there. Um, they're just all over the place, just milling through this high grass. We've got uh, fields all around us, and then uh, Terry and his brother own the woods here. And there's just we've heard some shooting. Not a lot of shooting this morning. No. You know, not not a lot, but some around. A deer are just pouring down in here, and uh, we saw one buck right before camera light that was uh looked like a big four or six and then terry just saw one uh, that we couldn't get on camera that skated through uh going to the north of us but uh we're looking for uh something with eight points at least four on a side and uh, these guys do really well here so i think if we just stick it out and be patient we'll hopefully have some some good footage for you but we'll check in every couple hours let you know what's going on but 9 a.m opening day of the 2013 season. So far, so good. Well, we were seeing a lot of deer with the large fields all around us. The 120 acres of woods that Terry and his family have, well, that's where the deer wanted to be, and it was making for a nice morning. The entire thumb is in the shotgun zone, so you want to have the deer inside 150 yards and really inside 100 if possible. We had spotted a handful of small bucks moving through, but nothing with a rack on it yet. The conditions were perfect for the opener. Sun, a little on the warm side in the mid-50s, but just right. We also had about four or five other hunters on our property with us, and so far nobody had a buck down. But everybody was seeing deer. We were settled in and waiting for some action, and that's exactly what we got. After not seeing a deer for an hour or so, a good buck showed up in a shooting lane and walked right through it. We barely had time to get the camera on before Terry pulled the trigger. Shooting, yep, yep, yep. No, you did right. Shooting. I had to shoot him. See him? Yep. He was turning. He was going to the weeds, and I had to oh, shoot. Oh, I know. You did the right thing. Can you see him? I think he's laying in there. I haven't seen him move since. He went right there and stopped. Okay. Well, here's the situation. It's now 11 o'clock, pretty much on the nose, and just about two minutes ago, yeah. five minutes ago, uh, Terry got that nice shot at a buck, and. Uh, it happened so fast. He was in this lane, popped out. We saw it was a nice racked buck. Looks to be probably a nice big eight by the looks of it. I got the camera on and pointed it at the deer, just starting to zoom. We got him on there. We can see he made a good, looks like a good hit. But that deer was getting ready to step into some cover. And from where he was going to step in, Terry would not have had a shot had he waited for me to get a little bit more footage. So not a lot of footage. But a lot of deer this morning and what looks like a very nice buck. Well, what do you say, young fella? That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> a 
a lot of fun. That is a nice Michigan 10 point. Look at that buck. Wow. Well, walk me through what happened there, Terry. Well, it'd been kind of quiet the last hour, and we had a, a fawn come out, and we watched her, and then we had some activity to our south where one of our other hunting parties had shot at a deer, and we're looking for, and I think this got pushed right to us. Hmm. Come right down our shooting lane, and we're fortunate to get a shot at him. Boy, that is a nice rack. It all happened within <laughs> a couple know, seconds. 15 seconds. <laughs> Well, we did review the, the footage and he is on there, but whoa, boy, you made a nice shot. What a nice buck. Congratulations. Thank you, jo Jimmy. That was fun. We, just, we still got a lot of the day left. Yeah, we got we more do. hunting to do. Yep. Got this afternoon yet and get this guy tagged up and dressed out and get back in our blinds. Seeing lots of deer. Coming through in the thumb. The evening hunt proved to be pretty successful for a few hunters in our group, starting with young Ashton. There was about nine deer in the clover patch, and I turned around to look at something, and I turned back around to look at the deer, and I just saw him come out, and I saw there was antlers, and it was big, and then I shot it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Shot. Now, how many deer have you shot before? This is my second deer. Second deer. First buck or second buck? Uh, second buck, yeah. Awesome. And how old are you? I am 17. And a senior in high school? Yes. How many other seniors sat all day today, you think? Probably not any. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations. Thank you. That is an awesome buck. Well, the night had been a good one on the property. Once we got Ashton's deer loaded up, we went right over to Dave's blind, Ashton's dad, and got to look at his nice eight-pointer as well. Okay. Well, let's hear the story, young fella. <laughs> oh, young fella, all right. Um, <laughs> sat all day, um, letting some bucks go. Finally, uh, about 5 o'clock, had a... Nice little eight point come in a little smaller than this, let that one go. Um, he walked away 10 minutes. This one walked in actually pretty much underneath me. He grunted, that's how I knew he was there. Had to stand up to basically see him. Wow. Bang. How close, how far was the shot? 30 yards. 30 yards. Yep. Jeez, so father and daughter tag out on two nice eights tonight? Absolutely. Nice Pr job. Proud dad, it was a good day. I guess so. Great buck, congratulations. Thank you. This buck was a very nice eight point and what a great night for father and daughter, both putting tags on deer just minutes apart. So we got the three bucks out and on the pole and we retold and told the stories. It was a very good opening day here at the Weiler property. So now day two was upon us and I was getting kind of excited because I was not only the camera guy, but now I was the hunter as well. Terry and I moved to the spot where Dave had shot the buck the night before. He had seen deer all day long and being on the field edge gave us some nice views of the sunrise as well. We were seeing deer right away, and a few small bucks right away as well. But being limited to about a 150 yard shot made many of the deer out of range. It was a cool morning with lots of action. But there was one deer that kept my attention. Right at first light, we could see a nice buck tending a doe out in the middle of a large field. There was a big ditch between the two fields, and this is where the buck was at, and would not let the doe wander very far away. For hours, we watched the two go in and out of the ditch. The entire time we sat there watching it, I was hatching a plan that I hoped would work. I just couldn't take it any longer. I abandoned the camera, grabbed the gun, and started what ended up being an hour and a half stalk to get me in range of this nice deer. And the shocker of the morning? Well, my plan paid off. Well, this buck right here is one of the more fun and exciting hunts I think I've been on in quite a while. Unfortunately, as it is with a lot of good hunts, we don't have much video of it. This is the buck that we saw early in the morning along a little ditch and he had a hot doe with him and we sat there for I don't know Terry maybe an hour or more mm -hmm. watching this buck um, actually a couple hours because it was right at daybreak um, just working this little ditch and from where we were there was a little pocket of trees between us and that ditch when he went down in the ditch I snuck out came around to the uh, trees worked my way through the trees and ended up being able to sneak and crawl all the way down to this to the ditch get in the ditch and then work my way down the ditch slowly 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 and got to about as close as I could guess was probably a hundred and a quarter hundred well, probably about 150 yards and uh, thanks Terry for letting me come and be a part of it. You're welcome. 
Well, that stock is one I won't soon forget, and I wish we could have captured it on tape, but it wasn't in the cards. Rarely do you have the terrain to spot and stalk a whitetail, and it was pretty cool. This hunt in the thumb was very impressive. Several nice bucks taken in the group and many more spotted in the days to follow. Each camp in our state has something unique and special about it. And here in the heart of the thumb, the tradition of deer camp and opening day is alive and well. Thanks to the Weiler family for having me. It's one hunt I really enjoyed and one buck that I won't forget here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Thanks for joining us this week for Michigan Out of Doors. Make sure you check us out over the next few weeks. We'll be showing you how we all did with cameras rolling for opening day in the deer woods. I was over in the Yale area in Michigan's Thumb tagging along with a father and son team. So we'll show you how that went. And the other guys will show you how they did as well. Now coming up, we've got Thanksgiving holiday and we've got some PBS pledge activities happening. So our air schedule may be a little disrupted in your viewing area. But if that happens, you can always check out our new and older episodes on our website at michigandoutofdoorstv.com. Well, like Jenny said, we will have our opening day stories both on Thanksgiving and the first week of December. If you miss us on television, you can always check us out online. Good luck to everybody out there in the woods. Be safe, and hopefully we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by by Showspan, producing consumer shows including the Ultimate Fishing Show Detroit, January 12th through 15th at Novi's Suburban Collection Showplace. The show features fishing tackle, trips, boats, and seminars on all Michigan game fish. The Ultimate Fishing Show, Novi, January 12th through 15th. By Jay's Sporting Goods with locations in Clare and Gaylord. Jay's, serving the Michigan outdoor enthusiast since 1971 with a wide variety of outdoor products. The gear, the knowledge, the tradition of Jays. On the web at jayssportinggoods.com. By the Michigan chapters of Safari Club International. For over 40 years, SCI has been protecting hunters' rights and promoting wildlife conservation here in Michigan and around the world. SCI chapter locations can be found on the web at firstformichigan.org. By Greenstone Farm Credit Services. Making recreational land ownership possible across Michigan and northeast Wisconsin. Begin your land financing journey at one of Greenstone's 37 locations or visit greenstonefcs.com. Closed captioning is provided by Marvo Mineral, makers of Lucky Buck. Deer management products including minerals to supplement deer diets year-round to improve health and antler growth. When I want a far away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the sea.